Welcome to Crafty Chemist Designs. Today I am going to create this beautiful quilt scrapbook layout featuring the Cherish collection. This collection is close to my heart's December 2022 featured collection. Hi, my name is Maggie Workman. I am the Crafty Chemist. And as I said, we are going to be making this beautiful layout. I think this design is so amazing because it really features and shows off all of that beautiful paper. So let me introduce you to some of my details. If you like anything you see in this video, you can go to thecraftychemist.closetomyheart.com or scan that QR code. It takes you right there. I have a Facebook business page at Crafty Chemist Designs and a Facebook group, The Crafty Chemist Presents CTMH. I have an Instagram and TikTok called at Crafty Chemist Designs where I post every day. And I have a blog called periodicallycrafty.blogspot.com. So let's get started here. This is the Cherish collection, the papers in the collection. There are six designs and you get six sheets to each of the three double-sided designs in the paper pack the first paper here is this a small floral pattern and the reverse side is my favorite it is a larger floral pattern but look at those beautiful soothing colors this sheet on one side has what i would call maybe like little pussy willows it's a shortbread color and on the reverse is a sage color um, design. It's really hard to see on the video, but it is a diagonal stripe. This page is very unique. It has um, different strips of uh, sort of cutouts of some of the other papers. It's really unique. And then the last page is um, sort of the mist color with a, a diamond pattern on it. The sticker sheet is just gorgeous. Look at all of those amazing florals. I love them. And it has some really nice sentiments like it's a wonderful life, love grows here, and enjoy the moment. I love the flowers. And those pine cones are my absolute favorite. This is the coordinating cardstock that Close to My Heart has curated for you. Um, you get 12 sheets to each of French Vanilla. Uh, mink, shortbread, sage, seabrook. Seabrook is one of our new colors this year. It is a light bluish gray, um, and there it is compared to the white, so it, it's very light. And then the last color is mist. What a beautiful set of colors. So let's take a look in the catalog. You can see all of those papers there um, and the coordinating cardstock. The embellishments for this collection are um, some coordinating die cuts. You get one each of the French vanilla cardstock and wood printed paperboard that are six by six, and then one mist printed paperboard that's six by 12. Now these, um, die cuts actually were what's included with the scrapbooking workshop kit but they are um, th very similar to what you get with the embellishments so you can see they're very thin paperboard and the collection is also a digital art pack and in this pack you get um, the svgs to create this beautiful scrapbook layout look at all of those florals that are included there's a nice title cherish these little things and then there are two cards that are pre-made that um, all you need to do is hit make and it makes them there's also a picture my life card set you get 24 double-sided um, pocket cards 12 each of four by six and three by four Okay, let's get started making the page. I'm going to start with the mist color background, and that is a full 12 by 12 sheet. I am using the darker side. And um, the next layer is going to be uh, the mink layer, and it is a 
10 inch square. So 10 inches on both side. Okay, again, this is mink, and I am going to be using the darker side of this mink. Um, that is the true mink color. The other side is a little bit lighter. All of our papers are too toned like that. One side, the true side is the darker side, and then a lighter side of that. Okay, let's cut this mist to be 10 inches square. And... I'm going to attach it to the mist base page. Just add a little bit of adhesive. I'm using my tape runner here just to make things really easy. I have my base page on my Versamat so I can use the numbers on the side to help me line up. And since it's a 10 inch square, it's going to be one inch all the way around. So I'm using those uh, markings on the side to help me place it right in the middle. Okay, next we're going to do the sage piece. That's the th third layer. And this piece is nine and a half, a nine and a half square. Okay, and again, that was sage. So um, again, I'm using the dark side of the sage and I'm cutting it at nine and a half. And let's cut the second side. I love these colors together. That mist, that really kind of, a, it's a dark gray, but it has that bluish undertone. Um, and then the gray mink color and then the sage on top. So let's adhere that down, but you can really tell with that sage how the back side is a little bit lighter. When I flip that over, you really can see the difference in the two colors. Okay, again, I'm going to use the markings on my Versamat to help me line it up, but here we're going to have basically a quarter inch all the way around. So just place that sage right in the middle so it's centered. Okay, now we are going to cut the squares, and I'm going to take this first one with the florals. Remember the small floral on one side and the large floral on the other. And um, there's basically four triangles, so that means two squares. Okay, and um, I didn't use the back side really in that one because I felt like those big flowers would not show very well in the small uh, triangles. But we'll see if, if we will use it or not. So I'm cutting these um, pieces at three by three. So I'm cutting two of those. And then this one is the one that has the pussy willows on the one side and then the diagonal stripes on the other. And here you can see um, three triangles from the pussy willows and then um, basically two from the green triangle. So I'm going to cut two uh, pieces, but in that one I ha used an extra, an extra one. So again, I'm cutting it three. Um, by three and I'm going to cut two of them and then we'll decide later which side we're going to use if we're going to use the pussy willow side or the green diagonal stripe side okay look at that this beautiful contrast there okay and so I didn't show the contrast on the other one so I went back to show you that Okay, and we're going to use the last paper. Uh, remember the one side is the gray with the diamonds and I did use it uh, twice there on my sample page. I did not use the back side because I felt that those stripes would not really look well once I cut it into a square and then cut that along the diagonal. Um, again, we'll see when we put it together what we decide to use, but I did not use this in um, my sample page. So I'm going to turn it over just so you can see that um, 
the mist colored side and I'm cutting two of these. So for each of the th uh, three double sided design papers, I cut two squares that were three by three. Okay, so that's giving me six um, different squares. And then there are some that are um, solid color. And I cut the shortbread, white, and the seabrook. Okay, there we go. Um, now we're going to cut them along the diagonal from the corner to corner. And I find when I'm cutting things on the diagonal, I like to use my little guillotine chopper instead of my normal Fiskars trimmer. I just find that I can get it to line up with the corners a little bit better. Okay, so I'm just lining up the corners right along the edge of that blade, and then I'm cutting. Okay, and then we're gonna set those aside. And I'm just going to do that for all nine of my uh, pieces. And we will decide later uh, which side we are going to use. Now the ones that are solid, I mean, you could use the lighter or the darker side, but basically not. Now this one, um, the diagonal striped paper, I, I am going to cut, you know, parallel to the diagonals. So if you have paper that is directional, you may want to think about which way um, you cut the diagonal because it, I felt it looked um, strange if you cut against the diagonals that were already in the paper. So basically when I cut down, it was just right through two of the diagonal stripes. Okay, now I'm cutting that floral paper. This floral paper is not uh, directional, so you can cut it in any direction. Um, on this one, I just wanted to see which way is best to cut it. And I am going to cut it right down through that larger floral. And then the last one, I think is the Seabrook Solid, and just cut that. Okay, so now they're all cut. So remember, we started with the three inch squares and um, then we cut those three inch squares along the diagonal. So I got the base back out and um, here are all of my triangles that I'm going to use. And what I like to do is organize them um, so that all of the same designs are together because when you're trying to mix and match and make um, your papers uh, spread out evenly, I feel it's easier to do because you don't want to have like three of one color that's stuck on the bottom somehow when you get down to the end and then you, you know, you, you have to put all three of them in one of the squares or, you know, one and a half of the squares. So I set them out separate them so I can see what I'm working with. And then that helps me um, decide, you know, which, which of the triangles I'm going to use when I'm putting them together, just so that the colors and the patterns uh, balance out. Okay. And so for the most part, we're using um, two triangles from one design and two triangles from the reverse side. Okay, and now I'm just going to start arranging them. There's no adhesive or anything. I'm just trying to lay them out to see the pattern. And I am doing sort of a mirror of my sample page so that I could put these, um, you know, next to each other. Um, and you do maybe want to pay attention to the way that your diagonals are going. I mixed it up so that they weren't all going in sort of one direction, just to give it a little bit more of a random feel to it. You can try it where you line them up all going the same way to see if you like that. Um, but again, right now we're just playing around with the designs, the colors, um, to see if we can get a nice evenly spread out design. 
I'm trying to mix up my papers so that I don't have any one design sort of clumping together. Okay, and you'll see right here, it does look like I put two of the same papers together. Um, I do come back to that and, and change that, but it's hard to, to tell that when I was first doing it. Oh, and see, now I realize I did the same the same designs together. So now I'm like, oh, what should I do? Okay, so you see in this one, I am using that larger floral print, which I didn't do on the sample page. Putting some of that shortbread in there. I love how that shortbread color kind of um, stands out and pick, you know, picks out the shortbread in the other uh, papers. Okay, now see I'm left with two of the same one which I was trying to avoid by separating them out. So now I'm just going to spend a couple minutes kind of playing around with um, how I have things ordered. Okay, so I'm like, okay, maybe we can use the back side of the striped paper. Again, I don't think that looks the best um, right there, um, but we'll see. Okay, now I'm going to just look at the positioning to see if I have things spread out. Okay, I've got those two patterns apart from each other. Um, I've got one of the sage. Okay, yeah, there we go. There's the other one. Oh, I'm not going to use that. Okay, now I'm looking. Am I happy with that? Just making sure that I don't want to use the back side of any of those. So I have the sort of that pussy willow paper nicely evenly spaced. I've got the white evenly spaced. What I'm going to do is put that striped version um, because in that corner there because it will mostly be covered up by that. Um, picture and photo mat so I it won't look as bad so say you cut some of those triangles and it, the corners didn't quite match up that's okay you can just put it underneath your your picture so now what we're going to do is we, we're going to try to um, stick these down and keeping a quarter inch all around because remember these squares were three by three um, and so that makes these nine inch uh, a big nine inch square um, as you were putting adhesive down on these you want to really make sure you get those corners really well so that they don't stick up so I'm going to try and put these down and that fir this first square is really um, key to getting everything straight so um, you, you'll be you'll see that I'm just getting these placed perfectly so that all of the rest of them will be aligned perfectly and after I put that second piece down I decided I want to replace the first piece so that it's um, even you know it's a quarter inch from the right side but that the uh, line across, you know, the diagonal matches up. Now I am getting out my T-square here to help guide me and to help um, things stay straight. Okay, um, I just have that butted up against my Versamat and it, it provides a nice bottom layer for this. Okay, I've got all of my pieces down now, and I am checking to make sure that they're all lined up. Um, this is a T-square in the Close to My Heart catalog. It's in the core catalog. Um, that is not the T-square that I used in my uh, in the video here. Um, I had purchased mine a long time ago, and I haven't purchased a close to my heart one yet. Okay, um, so now let's put the 
um, a photo mat down and this mat I'm going to cut four and a quarter by six and a quarter and that will be to mat the um, a four by six picture Um, I am going to put it on sort of the right side so that it will m mirror um, the page that's on the left. And that's because I, I do want to use this as a two-page spread. And so, um, you know, I feel like if they were both on the left side of the page, it may look um, funny. Okay, uh, I'm not going to set it down yet because I, I do want to use one of these title stickers. And so I want to see where I'm going to place that first and then put down my um, picture and mat. Basically, you are going to want to center it um, on that first row um, and then center it uh, vertically between the second and the third row. But I am trying to make it look nice with how I'm going to set up that title. Okay, I decided I want to pop up the title so that it, because the shape of it makes it sort of nestle right along that corner very well. I am using uh, leftover pieces from my small shaker windows. Um, I did do a... Um, that shaker scrapbook layout last week and so these are the pieces that were all in the middle i used the outside circle to do my shaker layout and then you get all of these bonus pieces um, on the inside so that is what i'm trying to use yes foam tape is faster but i have so many of these uh, sheets <laughs> that um, i'm trying to use them up Okay, I am going to take off the um, the backing from the foam squares on not all of them, on only some of the squares because I don't want to put it over where the picture is going to be. So I'm going to leave those ones um, with the backing sheet on. Once I put uh, a picture down on the layout, then I will remove the backing from those and, um, you know, stick that down. But since I only have the placeholder, um, I don't want to stick um, the foam tape down yet because then I won't, you know, it won't come up. Okay. So, um, again, you see how I'm... I'm putting it about halfway down from the top of that first layer and I'm trying to evenly space it between the edges of those um, the second and the third column okay there we go but again I'm I also want it to look good with this title so I, I slid it over a little bit to the left so that title could fit completely um, on the the floral design not the um, outer mats okay so there i'm sticking it down and you can see the part that's over the photo a uh, photo is not stuck down so i'm still able to stick a photo under there okay now let's just do the fl flower um, sort of spray that we've got there um, I'm trying to decide which ones to use. And I think I'm going to use this um, sort of angled spray there in the, the corner. But I want some greenery to go around it. So um, I'm taking the two sticker leaves and then I'm not sticking that spray down right now because I am going to pop that up, but I'm using it to just place my leaves so that um, the stem will look like it's coming out from underneath um, the spray. So I'm being very careful about not 
sticking that the floral um, spray down. Okay. Okay. Right, now again, I'm going to put some of this foam tape, the foam squares, over this. And I'm using up, look at this, I used up that whole sheet there from, uh, again, that was left over from my small circle windows. And I'm getting the, I think it's the last one out from that pack. I've already used the um, circles from that, um, from those um, sheets. So all that's left is that inner part that is the bonus. I do like to use a lot of foam tape because I like, um, first of all, these to be held down firmly, but also I like, um, I don't like there to be wobbly parts. Like I don't like it to look like the center is caving in or that, you know, one side of my, uh, a sticker or the f the flowers there um is uh pushing down or getting squished down okay so i even put some you see here in the center so that it's not uh, sagging in the middle okay now on this one i am not going to take off the backing on those center ones i'm only going to be taking off backing from around the edges here okay the ones that are on the paper now anything that will touch the photo or that will touch the photo placeholder because that is going to be removed once i put my photos on the page so i'm just removing the backing from the ones around the edge and i'm leaving the ones in the center with the backing on okay now this row i think i'm going to remove uh, remove the backing from that row because it will be really hard to reach my hand in there and to remove the backing um, once i have it stuck down so only those there are um, still on with the backing and those ones are easy to remove the backing once i put the photo down you see i can still kind of reach under there but nothing is touching the photo. So let's um, put some flowers up above the, by the um, sentiment like I have on this sample. Um, and, and so here is where I'm just looking at the sticker sheet and I'm trying to find something to use. I ha have no plan um, exactly when I, when I started, you know, which stickers I'm going to use. Um, I started with the blue. I didn't like it against the blue background that's right behind that. So I went with the white. And, you know, and by white, I'm, I it really mean sort of that cream of very light shortbread. Um, so I put the white flower down and then I go, oh, I'm second guessing, but I, I kept it on there. Now I'm looking for a leaf or something to put behind it. So let's grab this leaf. To put behind it okay that's starting to look nice and I just realized that the shirt that I have on in this video um, you know kind of matches <laughs> this layout it's a gray with a little bit of blue and some uh, overall floral prints on that so that's kind of funny that was not intentional um, okay let's see does it I feel like it needs something else. Let's see if I can get these, um, the little pussy willows. I, I, don't really, I don't know what those, call. I'm calling them pussy willows, but I don't know what they are. But they're like little puff, puff balls, buds almost. But I don't think they're buds because they look more puffy. Okay, I stuck that one down on the larger spray on the bottom. So what can we put up there at the top? I feel like it's not um, floral enough, that there's not enough going on there. So what can I put on? And I'm like, okay, maybe another one of these pussy willow bud things. Oh, and now I'm like changing my mind. Like, no, I'm going to put down one of the pine cones. 
So now let's try and place the pine cone. Oh, I don't know what looks good. So I'm just kind of trying it in different places. And I like, I like it there, so I stick it down. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else that I could put down? Uh, okay, I'm back to the Pussy Willows. Sticking it back there. That doesn't look good. Uh, it just doesn't look good anywhere over there, so I'm putting it back on the sticker sheet. But, uh, you know, I really want something. I want something to sort of hang down. Okay, so I, I get these little leaves that hang down. I don't know, those look like maybe eucalyptus leaves. Okay, I like I like it there. You see how I've got them hanging down there? Um, and now I'm going to add those glitter gems like I have on my sample page. And these are silver glitter gems. You could throw on some of those um, die cuts um, if you have the embellishments. Um, but I'm going to put on the silver glitter gems. I really like the addition of just a little bit of sparkle on this page. So I'm putting um, two or three up here. Get that one just where I want with my little uh, pokey tool. And now I'm going to add a couple on the bottom. Okay, one, and now two. These ones are sticking on the sheet pretty pretty well, so having to take them off and, and get them placed just where I want them. I'm trying to get that one to show well, so I, I think I like it on the shortbread there. Okay, is that good enough? Oh, and I just realized that I've got some small ones. I thought they were all the same size, the bigger glitter gems, but I just noticed that I had a couple small ones. So I took off one of the uh, the bigger ones, put it back on the um, backing sheet and added a small one. And I'm going to take one of them from up at the top and add a small one, just to give a little bit of different sizes. I think it looks. It would have been perfectly fine if I had left the in them all the same size, um, but um, they were kind of hiding behind the uh, label there, and I didn't realize that um, I had the small ones. Okay, um, and there you have it. Um, I did put them together. If you um, like this, you might be interested in this scrapbooking workshop kit um, that is available. Um, we have a scrapbooking workshop kit where you can make those three two-page layouts. And the, in the kit, you get everything you need to make those layouts. You get the paper pack and sticker sheet, um, five cardstock sheets, four exclusive pattern papers, um, two exclusive printed die cut sheets. Um, you get the misprinted paperboard, French vanilla, um, cardstock die cut sheets. Um, and you also get the uh, page protectors if you want. Um, and that's the Cherish collection. If you like anything you see here, go to my website at thecraftychemist.closetomyheart.com. Follow me on Facebook, Crafty Chemist Designs. I invite you to join my Facebook VIP group, um, The Crafty Chemist Presents Close to My Heart. And follow me on Instagram and TikTok um, at Crafty Chemist Designs. Thank you.